Hello, Jochen. This is our third and last part of our interview series. We had the first two parts in German. And um, the last part, it's, that is about your uh, presentation you are giving at the Value Weekend, which is also held in Berlin in, uh, from 21st till 23rd September. Um, you're on the 21st, you're giving a talk about Green Revolution's winners and losers. And um, just want to start with the question, what is Green Revolution for you? Yeah. So um, I've been inspired, of, I literally mentioned it before as well, by Jeremy Rifkin's book, The Third Industrial Revolution, where he said that any um, revolution, industrial revolution has a, a media component, an energy component. The first industrial revolution was the, the steam engine coming out, um, replacing the hand weaving stools and pumping water out of mines. And in fact, here in Berlin, just one street north from us in Oranienburger Straße is where the German Industrial Revolution started. The, the Feuerland was just north of us here. Mm -hmm. And we will be right in the Feuerland uh, in September. Uh, and media, they had the printing press invented, thanks to Gutenberg. Uh, and then the second Industrial Revolution was the, the, the telegraph, telecom, television on the media side and the fossil fuels on the energy side. So we moved... Um, Uh, and we have now a third industrial revolution where we've moved from telecom and mass media television to internet of things, an internet where people can pass individual messages targeted and the energy form moves from fossil fuels to renewables. So this third industrial revolution, um, yeah, I like to call the green industrial revolution, the World Economic Forum calls it the fourth industrial revolution. I call it the green industrial revolution because in fact, in the future, I don't see ability anymore for people to... Uh, yeah, the, the beauty of this new industrial revolution is you can have a positive effect on the environment and make a lot of money. And you have the possibility to lift humanity out of poverty, and uh, to live in a world of abundance. Uh, the marginal cost of renewable power is zero. We can live happily on this planet in a more democratic fashion, if we have decentralized local power, we can have uh, peace, as this olive tree uh, could represent, because there's no more needs to, f to fight over a long transport path, everything is decentralized. Now, what does it mean for an investor to be in an industrial revolution? At the last industrial revolution in 1900, we had horses on the streets, and we had uh, just 13 years later, all these horses replaced by cars, basically, in big towns. And in the Dow Jones Index, number one, there was just steam engine railway companies in Western Union. By 1914, all of those components of the first Dow Jones Index had disappeared, and that only West, Western Union survived. And there were new champions, J.P. Morgan, Carnegie. And I say the reason we have a new industrial revolution, a green industrial revolution, is that there's no more doubt that a few key components have become competitive. Renewable power is now available. Uh, for two cents a kilowatt hour in Dubai, which is equivalent to four dollars a barrel of oil. So only if someone can lift oil at four dollars a barrel, can they produce power from it at a price competitive to solar. And in Russia, you're lifting at thirty dollars a ton in the North Sea at sixty, the tar sands are hundred fifty, so they're all dead. They don't know it yet, but it makes no more economic sense to invest money into new fossil fuel exploration projects. On the transport side, The electric car um, has become highly competitive. It used to be that a Tesla was sexy. It went from 0 to 100 in 2.9 seconds, and it has seven seats, and it doesn't cause cancer, and it's wonderful, and there's no more range anxiety because supercharging networks have been built. You can have superchargers even on wheels. So you're driving on the highway. Uh, a, someone connects to you with a supercharger in the back of your truck or car. You drive for half an hour, your car is charged, you keep on driving, so no need for range anxiety, and you now have competitive cars. The newest car, for example, Nissan Leaf, cost 20,000 euros, and uh, that's how I was able to convince the Pope to switch from a Ford Focus, which costs him 16,000 euros, to a Nissan Leaf, which costs 20,000 euros, because it's a bit more expensive, but every year he saves 1,000 euros on fuel costs, and secondly, the electric car can be used as a storage facility for the grid. So when there's no wind blowing and no sun shining, uh, the electric car battery can be used to feed power to the grid. And so we've solved the storage problem as well. And in that fashion, breakthroughs in energy transition, 
transport transition, finance transition, agricultural transition, circular economic business model, and IT, artificial intelligence, put together we call the green revolution. And from that you have amazing new investment opportunities, but also a perspective for a democratic, peaceful world where people live in abundance. That's the industrial revolution they call the green industrial revolution. And what are the costs? of this industrial revolution or this green industrial revolution. Maybe the map can show us also something on it. Yeah, we have the back of here. <laughs> I like this uh, map a lot. This is what inspired us. It's uh, from, from Desert Tech originally. It shows that this little space here, uh, the solar panels could power the whole world if you had a centralized power plant. But of course, you can just take that and spread it across the world. And then you have tiny little spots of solar power supplied around the world. It is ridiculously low. The, the overall macro picture is that we need about 1.5 trillion euros additional investments in climate solutions to be able to move towards a sustainable future to meet the climate change goals. We're only investing about 0.5 trillion a year. So we have the big challenge to move 1 trillion more a year into climate solutions. And I hope to work together with intelligent long-term uh, investors like value investors to put together eventually a, a vehicle which will allow even retail investors to participate in endowment style, long-term impact investing. Um, I think we are sitting on 19 trillion euros of cash on current accounts in the EU, 19 trillion. So to spend half a trillion of that money into solar or wind farms, which is a good return compared to zero return on the current account, seems a good solution. So it's feasible, it's achievable, it needs 1.5% of GDP. In terms of Germans, that's about 750 euros a year of investment or about, was it 60, 70 euros a month. Should be doable. So it's a very interesting topic. We're looking forward for your presentation at the Value Weekend. And also, if you're coming to the Value Weekend for our guests out there, you have the chance to ask a lot of questions because the whole thing is uh, the idea that people come and have a lot of space to ask their questions and discuss yeah. topics they won't understand and we're happy that you are an expert who gives answers. Thank you Thank very you. much for the interviews. Thank you. Thank you.